All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and in this video, we're gonna actually write some real code. So the last video, we did some basic project setup. We learned how to write comments, we learned how to do camel case, uh, but now it's time to actually look at some real data. So in software programming, when you work with data, that data always has a type, it's a type of data. And so in this video, we're gonna look at some of those basic types. So specifically, I think we're gonna look at strings, booleans, and numbers. And it might sound really elementary, but if you have not written code before, some of this is definitely new to you. The simplest way for me to describe this to somebody who's never written a line of code before would be if you ever used Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, you can highlight your input and then change the format of it, right? You could change whatever you put in to maybe a, to be a date, to be a percentage, to be a number. That's kind of what this is. We have some data and we need to declare it as a certain type. And depending on what type of data it is, we're gonna write that differently in code. So the first thing we're gonna look at is strings. Strings are like what a non-programmer would call regular text. Uh, string is basically how we put actual text onto the screen. But we're also gonna look at Booleans. Booleans are if something is true or false and only ever true or false. Then we're also gonna look at numbers. In Swift, there's a couple different types that can all be numbers. And so we're gonna dive into a little bit here on what those different types are, when or when we shouldn't be using those. And this is gonna set us up for the next couple of videos because we're gonna take what we've learned, we're gonna take these types and in the next couple of videos, we're gonna actually use them to create functions and to start writing real code. All right, welcome back everybody. So in the last video, we looked at some basics of how to get working in the Swift playground. So again, if you were just joining, we are in a Swift playground within Xcode and we right click the navigator and created a new playground page. And in the last video, we created another page called basic types. In this video, we're gonna work in this basic types page. So if you're just joining, go ahead and create a new playground page. It should just be a blank Swift file, which looks like this. And this is the default code that it gives us, but we're just going to delete that. We're gonna import foundation for now. Foundation is like the, literally the foundational Swift module. It's got some basic types and Swift behaviors that we want to import. And then in this video, we're gonna look at some basic types in Swift. So as we write code, there's different types of data that we're going to use in our app. And as we get more advanced, we're going to start creating our own types. But right now, we're going to look at just the basics. And you saw a second ago, actually, if I undo this, there was a variable called greeting, and it was equal to hello playground. And this hello playground was wrapped in quotes. And it was wrapped in quotes because this is of type string. And so when we were writing, we were always creating some sort of object that has a type, and then we're setting it equal to a value of that type. So in this video, we're gonna really dive into these objects. Now I wanna note here again that this is var, and what we're gonna do in this video is gonna say let. In the next video, actually, I will explain the difference between those two. So don't let that trip you up just yet. But again, let's just delete this. Let's import foundation and let's start from scratch. So here I'm going to say, let my first item, and I'm going to set it equal to hello world. All right. When something is wrapped in these quotes, it is, it is of type string. String is basically what a non-programmer would call regular text. So up here, I'll put a comment that string is regular text. So if I wanted to put hello world on the screen, I would make a string of hello world. And you'll notice that if I got rid of these quotes here and just wrote hello world, this will not compile. And that's because the compiler, so the thing that is running the code and trying to read our code here, does not know what this is. It does not know that this is supposed to be regular text. It's not sure if these are like part of the code or this is something else. And so we're getting this compiler error here that cannot find this in scope. 
because it doesn't know what it is. So what we do is we wrap these in quotes and this nice orange indicator shows us that this is now a string. And so in Swift, if we hold the option button and click on an item, we can actually see here that the, in the declaration, this my first item is of type string. And we can actually write that in our code here. We can write of type string. So there's no difference on whether or not we want to include this or not. Once you get like good at writing Swift, you probably don't need to actually include this. But as you were learning, I think it's a good habit to start including the types so that it's more explicit. So here, this is a constant called my first item that is of type string. And we're setting it equal to a string that says hello world. All right, so once we have something in our code, we can then reference that object. So down here, I'm gonna say, let me my title, and I can set my title equal to my first item. And you'll notice here that when I reference my first item, it's telling me that my first item is of type string. So if I click enter, the value of my title is equal to the value of my first item. So if my first item is equal to hello world, my title now equals hello world. And if I run this, we can see on the right here that both of them are hello world. All right, so I'm gonna put a quick comment here that we can reference previously created objects. And basically all of your code is going to be a derivative of this. We're gonna create some file or some screen, and then we're gonna reference other files and screens from the previous files and screens. And so let's look at another type here. So if we didn't want maybe just a string, maybe we wanted a something that is like true or false. And in code, we call that a Boolean, also known as a bool. And a bool is true or false. So a Boolean is true or false. And we can say, let my second item and I will set it equal to true. Okay, so if I hold the option one and click on my second item, I can see that it is of type bool. I could also explicitly say that this is of type bool. I can do another one here called maybe my third item and set it equal to false. So Booleans are true or false, and there is a use case of when to use strings versus when to use Booleans. Yes, for example, you could say, let my fourth item of type string and set it equal to a string that says true, but this would be bad programming because uh, there are benefits of using, if something's only ever going to be true or false, we want to use a Boolean. Because in our code, we can then reference it and say, if this is true, if this is false, then do something. But the compiler doesn't know that this is a true or false statement. It just thinks this is a string. This is some text. So this, I would say, do not do. Okay. And I'm going to comment that out just so that it's not running in our code. Now, I want to show you that Swift is a type safe language. And this is your best, your new best friend is the fact that Swift is a type safe language. And so here I'm going to say, let my fifth item, I'm going to make it of type bool and I'll set it equal to hello world. All right. And so now again, we're going to have a compiler error here and it's telling us we cannot convert of type string to specified type bool. And this is saying that it cannot convert this string to what we said was going to be a bool. And this is what we mean that swipe and this is what we mean that Swift is a type safe language. If you tell the compiler that something is supposed to be a boolean and then you're trying to set it equal to something that is not a boolean, the code will not compile. And that is a very very good thing for us as programmers because if this was the line of code in our app, it would be crashing and it would cause problems. Because obviously our code is going to expect a Boolean here, but it's going to get a string. So to make this compiler error go away, of course, we need to add a Boolean as the value. Okay. 
The reverse would also be true. We'll say let my sixth item as of type string. And if I set it equal to a Boolean, of course, that's not going to work either because that is, we can't set a Boolean equal to a string. So I can fix this by putting in hello world. And I want to show you guys that if I did let my seventh item and I don't declare explicitly what type that this has to be, I can set it equal to anything that I want. So I can set it equal to true, right? Now, if I hold the option button and click on it, it's a Boolean, but I could also set it equal to hello world. If I hold the option button and click on it, it's now a string. But once it is set as one type, that type cannot change. So once it is a string, it's always going to be a string. Once it is a Boolean, it's always going to be a Boolean. But yeah. All right. So now you guys know what it means that Swift is a type safe language. And that's going to be so incredibly important as we start writing more difficult code. Two other types that I want to get into real quick are, so Swift has dates. So a date is literally exactly what you would expect. We can say let my first date of type date and we'll set it equal to date now i open and close the parentheses on date that date is then considered right now so if i run this code and i look at what prints out today is may 27th the time is 7 26 pm this date is right now there's a bunch of really cool easy like accessors in date so if i press the period here i can see there's like we can do a date of now which is the same thing that we just did. We can do distant past, distant future. There's a whole bunch of cool like dates from different time intervals. So I'm gonna get into this in like way down the line. We don't need to really focus on this right now, but just know that there is a type in Swift called date and that's how we're gonna work with dates. Okay, so anytime you are using a database or creating objects, or most of the time, at least, we track like when an object was created or when it was saved, and we use the date type to track that. But the final thing I wanna to touch on in this video is numbers, because we're gonna use numbers a lot in this playlist. And I'm gonna write here that numbers can be int, double, CG float, and more. So when you think about a Boolean, it's always a bool, true or false. When you think about a string, it's always a string. But when you think about a number, a number, there's actually a bunch of different types that all appear to be numbers, especially if you've never written code before. So for example, I can say, let my first number, I can set it equal to one. And I can say, let my second number, and I can set it equal to 1.0. Now I hold the option button and click on this. We're going to see that this is an int, meaning an integer. And if I hold the option button and click on this one, we can see that it is a double. Okay, so kind of weird that these look very similar and yet they're different types. So in Swift, we have different types for different numerical values. Int is a whole number. So here I'm going to put that int is a whole integer. So one, two, three, ten, 10, 100, but there's no decimals in an integer. So this is of type int. If there are decimals, generally it's going to be a double or a CG float. So here we can see that this is a double. So I can put, make this of type double. Okay. I'm going to create another one that's let my third number of type I'll make it up type CG float and I'll set it equal to 1.0. And so these two are basically exactly the same. Like this could be a CG float. This could be a double. Doesn't really matter. But the rule of thumb, I would say, as you're learning at least, is that here we use double for math and we use CG float for UI. So if we are saying like add this times this divided by this, we want to use doubles. If we are saying put this 15 pixels on the edge of the screen or make this 45 pixels in height or make this font size 42, we're going to use CG floats because those are UI components. 
at least that's like the rough rule of thumb. There is no like set in stone rule. But the important thing of all of this is that if you're doing the hardcore math problems, you probably should be using doubles because if you, for example, if you divided two integers, it might cause problems because dividing two integers would probably result in a decimal and integer does not support decimal, but double does. So if you divide two doubles, the outcome is probably closer to what you're looking for. All right. I'm not going to really get into anything more than this in this video. I just wanted to explain what type safety was in Swift. So Swift, again, is a type safe language. And throughout the rest of this playlist, we're going to use all of these data types, and then we're going to start creating our own data types as well. In the next video, though, so in this video, everything that we created was a let. A let is what's called a constant. And you notice that at the beginning of the video, there was something called a var, which is a variable. And the difference is basically that variables can change their value while let gets equal to one thing and it never changes. And so in the next video in this playlist, we're going to learn the difference between a var and a let. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.